Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. Look us up on Roku. We're in the sports section, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You know, women's boxing right now is the wild, wild west. Things are happening in women's boxing that wouldn't be allowed to happen in men's boxing, right? It Women's boxing literally is a sport that, in my opinion, right now is akin to men's boxing back in the late 19th century, early 20th century, when the sport was largely unregulated. There is a fighter. Right now she is the junior middleweight champion. Her name is Oxandia Castillo. She is 18 years old. She's unbeaten. 12 wins, no losses, two draws, nine of the wins by KO. She actually knocked out the junior middleweight champion, Hannah Gabriel, in the second round of their championship fight, which was her last fight. But let's get under the hood and let's look at the four fights that Oxandia Castillo had before fighting the champ. These are the fights that put her in position to fight for the championship, <clears throat> right? In those four fights preceding her championship shot, which she won, she fought fighters who were 0-8, one and fourteen. O and eight and O and four in succession. In other words, the four people she fought immediately before fighting for the title had a total combined career wise of one win at the time she fought them. Right now, based on beating these four fighters, Castillo then got a shot at the belt. That would never happen in men's boxing today. No sanctioning body would allow that fight to go forward. As it turned out, Castillo won the fight because she's a puncher. She landed a right-hand bomb on Hannah Gabriel, and of course Gabriel hit the canvas and did not recover. The problem, though, is that now champion Castillo has holes in her game that are pronounced. These are the kind of holes that, had she been fighting, world-class competition may have been patched, right? But she hasn't. She fought the junior middleweight champion, got a one-punch knockout, and now is about to fight women's boxing's version of Floyd Mayweather. Cecilia Bracus, if you don't know, pound for pound, quite frankly, is one of the best fighters in the world. She's a counterpuncher. She throws straight punches. She can easily slip your jab. She looks like a model. In reality, she is an unbeaten champion. She's the champion at welterweight. She's 22 and 0 with six KOs. Right? I view this fight as a huge mismatch because of the defects in Castillo's game. Here's the biggest defect. When she throws a punch, she has a windup. In other words, rather than just throw the punch and catch the opponent off guard, she literally has to lean back. Right? In other words, she has her hand here. She has to lean back to cock it. Then she comes forward 
to throw it. That extra time that she spends in reaching back to throw the punch will give a quick opponent who's reading her movements an opportunity to get out of the way of that right hand. Right, Hannah Gabriel slipped up a bit, right? She allowed a puncher to hit her with that punch. I don't expect Cecilia Bracus to do that, right? Let me also say, too, that if you get inside on Castillo, I don't think she knows what to do. There's a whole art to fighting inside, right? You come in. You tie up the opponent's main weapon. In this case, it's Castillo's right hand, right? You hit the opponent in the rib cage and on unprotected parts of their body. If an opponent doesn't know how to keep distance between you and her, and if the opponent doesn't know how to fully tie you up, that opponent is going to get battered once you get inside their hands, once you get inside their power zone. I think Cecilia Bracus has a pronounced advantage on the inside in this fight, right? What Castillo does well is she does have a pretty good jab, and she can actually move with it. In other words, she can find you in the ring. That's why this fight is a bit interesting, because I believe Bracus, who normally doesn't have a lot of power, as I said earlier, six KOs in 22 fights, actually has a chance at a stoppage in this 10-round affair because I get the feeling Castillo is going to force the issue. I get the feeling that Bracus can dodge Castillo's left jab and stay away from Castillo's Sunday right-hand punch in her sleep. And I just get the feeling that Castillo, who is a bully, right? She's a hunter. She's the knockout puncher, right? A greater than 50% KO ratio in women's boxing is huge, right? I get the feeling that fighters like that haven't thought much about defense, haven't thought much about what happens when they're the ones getting hunted. Bracus almost certainly will be able to be right in front of Castillo, throwing straight, crisp, clean, hard counters. I don't think Castillo is prepared for that. I like Bracus to win the fight with a little spice on Bracus by KO. Don't put all your money on Bracus by KO. Put some of it on Bracus simply to win. But I would sprinkle a little bit on Bracus by KO if your sports book allows you to do so. I get the feeling you're talking about a big puncher with wide punches and a windup, fighting a seasoned technician who's looking to exploit those shortcomings, right? I think once Bracus gets going, this is going to look a bit like Floyd Mayweather against Arturo Gotti. I'm expecting the welterweight champion to beat the junior middleweight champion. She's a big favorite. There isn't a lot of juice in this one. Bracus is a 9-1 to favorite. Nonetheless, I'm expecting her to win, and I think she has a chance at a stoppage in this one. The bet I'm recommending is Bracus to win, hedged with, and it's not really a hedge, it's an enhancer. Enhanced with a few dollars on Bracus by KO. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.